I have here some new parts that just came out from Garter. These just came out in Taiwan. They're probably not available elsewhere yet, but they should be available soon. And I think this is a very interesting offering. These are high kappa aluminum frames. Now frames are an interesting place because there's not really any sort of low cost or mid range, if you will, offerings for frames for high kappas. Right now, most people get their frames by using a Tokyo Marie base gun and they build and add on other aftermarket parts on that. But frames are a bit harder to get and very expensive. For example, Airsoft Masterpiece and Gunsmith Brothers put out full CNC aluminum frames. Um, LA Kappa Customs is also coming out with their own frame soon. We're going to see that before long. But all those frames tend to be relatively expensive. For these guys, however, the MSRP, the recommended price for the no marking versions, which I have here, is 2,000 Taiwanese dollars, aka about 68 US dollars. The one, versions with markings, and I'll go over that in a second, um, for about 2,200 Taiwanese dollars is the MSRP, which is about 75 US dollars. However, the market price in Taiwan is notably cheaper than the MSRP. Of course, these are made in Taiwan and a lot of stores carry, so there's a lot of price competition, but the market price for these is 1,400 Taiwanese dollars, which is about 48 US dollars. So it's a pretty cheap offering. Overseas, I expect these to be about at or even a little bit higher than the MSRP, just because overseas, the prices tend to be a bit more. But even then, for $70, $80 or so, having a frame like this is an interesting mid-market option. Whereas previously, really, your options were the frame that comes with your TM or going kind of Gucci and getting a really nice CNC aluminum frame. This gives you the ability to have a lightweight aluminum frame for a much cheaper price. So it's a pretty interesting offering in the market because it's relatively cheap and it fills a gap in the market. This may also allow you to make a high kappa with no base donor gun for much cheaper than you could before. It comes in a variety of markings. I both got no markings for these ones, but they come in infinity markings, uh, STI 2011 style markings and SV markings, as well as two different colors. They have the black here. They also have a silver Though the silver only comes in the no marking version, I believe. The nice thing about the silver is that sometimes people use the TM silver frame to get themselves a silver frame for whatever color scheme they're going for for their high kappa build. But the issue with the TM frame is that oftentimes, apparently, the silver paint likes to come off. This, I believe, whatever finish they have here is not one I believe that will come off. So you have a good price, you have a variety of markings. This is also going to be lighter. It's cast aluminum, whereas the original TM frames are cast zinc, which is a much heavier metal. So you have a number of upsides. Your potential downsides, however, are a few. One is that cast aluminum can be weaker than cast zinc, so we'll have to see kind of long term if there's any issues with that. I tend to think it shouldn't be much of a problem. Frames, by and large, actually don't come under that much pressure in most areas, and it's not likely that frames will wholesale crack catastrophically, but I can't say it's impossible. We'll have to see. I'm not going to be able to cover that in this video because really that's more of a question of looking at use over time but I'm going to look and see if I see any really quick wear uh, versus what you'd expect from a stock frame. The other potential downside is basically just fitment. Being cast, and especially cast aluminum, sometimes it's not as precise, for example, as cast zinc, so we'll see how that comes out. Garter stuff sometimes requires level of fitment. I'm going to go and throw this into a high kappa and see if I need to do any fitment or not. But even if you need a little bit of fitment, to be honest, I think that these are potentially a really interesting offering on the market. So let's take a look. So this one I had already opened. I'm going to open this up real quick and then try to stop the side plate from falling off here. These are original TM style with a side plate. They're not, for example, an advanced style frame, which is a little bit different. And you can see here it's really a close replica of the TM 4.3 frame is this one. Except, of course, you're lacking the TM markings there. Similarly, we have our gold match style frame here. Let's open it up. And pull it out. And this guy is covered in a bag here because I have yet to open it at all. But again, you can see it is a close replica of the TM gold match style frame. The gold match style frame essentially being a 4.3 frame with an additional kind of cut back here to match the length of the 3.9 TM original frame. 
So before I go and talk about the garter frames in detail, let me provide some contextual information about TM frames. Because a lot of people that watch this maybe won't know so much about what the differences are with TM frames. TM frames come in a few flavors. One, the 5.1. Two, the 4.3. And three, gold match. And then with 5.1 and 4.3, there are sort of silver versions of these. Now, one thing that confuses a lot of new builders is that they know the 4.3 is a shorter gun, but actually the frame of the 5.1 is shorter. The reason for that is that with the 4.3, the slide goes all the way out to the end of the frame. But with the 5.1, the slide actually goes and extends considerably past the end of the frame here. For example, this is a DOR, but it uses a 5.1 length frame. And you'll see here, it goes out considerably further. If we put a 4.3 on top of it, right about there is about where it should be covered. You're gonna see the 5.1 slide indeed goes out further. The gold match kind of splits the difference between the two. It has the length, the same length as you see here of the 4.3, but that has a cut back to the length of where the 5.1 is. Now what's confusing here is that sometimes people will refer to the 5.1 frame as a 3.9 length frame. The reason for this is this frame is actually appropriately sized and what's used for what are called 3.9 or sometimes 3.8 length high kappas here, which you can see this frame is the same size. This is an army armament 3.8, I guess, maybe 3.9. I think it's 3.8 um, length high kappa. So the question becomes, why are they named 5.1, 4.3, etc.? Just FYI, sort of the original reason is, is that is referring to the length of the barrel on kind of the actual firearm version. So like broadly speaking, you know, when you have your 2011 or 1911 style guns, they come in a variety of different sizes. And one of the things that differentiates them is the barrel length, AKA the length around here. So if you measure this, for example, this length is about 3.9 inches. In the high kappa world, what you're primarily referring to is the Tokyo Marie model and the length kind of based upon that name. So the naming of the models and the frames is a little bit arbitrary. But just broadly know that 5.1 is the shortest, 4.3 is longer, and typically goes out to the end of a 4.3 slide, just like this. And the gold match splits the difference. The nice thing about the gold match is that when you split the difference like that, it works aesthetically with either slide. So this is a 4.3 slide. You see it goes out to the end here, but it leaves a little peak there. And this slide has cut so you can see the guide plug. So it looks kind of nice there while also looking nice on a 5.1 length slide. You see the 5.1 length slide here, this has the cut back. So it aesthetically matches this sort of scallop cut, which you see on a lot of the 5.1s like this. Whereas if you put a 5.1 slide on a 4.3, it works fine, but then you have this kind of weirdness here where this doesn't match up aesthetically. As long as you don't mind the look of it, it'll function fine, but there are some aesthetic concerns there. Before I put the garter frames on a gun, let's take a look at them in detail and compare them to the TM frames. So this is the gold match style frame. As noted, it is the side plate style, same style as the original TM frames. A lot of the aftermarket ones are what's called the advanced style, which I don't have a AM or GSB one on me at the moment, but they don't have the side plate and they have different hammer internal system slightly. Now, comparing this with TM, we can see it's pretty faithfully reproduced. I do see there's a slight casting imperfection there, which is unfortunate, but to be honest, you do sometimes see similar imperfections on the TM one. The weight difference here is very obvious. So the gold match frame you're looking at 155.3 grams versus 65.6. So less than half of the weight. That's without all the side plates and stuff. So it'll be a slightly more with the side plates. But insofar as the relative weight, this is much, much lighter. You can also see there's some marks in the casting different areas here. Functionally, these shouldn't matter so much. In fact, some of this is better. One of the downsides of some TM frames actually is that for whatever reason, and this doesn't seem to be consistent, but in a lot of runs, they actually have a lot of flashing here, which doesn't matter with the stock guns, but once you put on a aluminum frame, which is tighter, you often need to file this down here. Let's see if you can see here. You can see here, I have, this one I have not used that much, so I haven't filed this down, 
but just testing and putting on aluminum frames here sometimes you see it's already had to worn down a little bit here oftentimes when you put on aluminum frame you have to actually go and file that down these guys don't have that this is actually a gold match frame different from a 5.1 or 4.3 frame actually has an interrupted rail here it still works fine because the rear rail is the normal rails but then it is a little bit looser here on aluminum frames the reason for this is on a gold match you actually have this little plate here and you can see it's screwed in you can remove this if you need to for some reason but this little plate here which sticks out and is fills in kind of the gap here for that frame so if we put this on for example this goes on okay but because of this extending out whoops, sorry but because of this extending out, if you try to put it on a stock one, which doesn't have that interrupted rail there, it actually will not go on. So they have properly reproduced that with the GM style frame from Garter. So if you do want to put this on a fully stock gold mash, it will work no problem. We do notice here that the rail is a little bit different though. Honestly, I don't know of any cases where you really use this vertical part of the rail. And usually for a flashlight, you don't have room here because it's too close to the trigger guard. This will fit a TLR1, no problem, I believe. Like so. As expected, I wouldn't expect any issues with the rail stuff there. The overall, I think these seem to be a very faithful reproduction of the TM factory side plate style frames. I think there's only two major differences that maybe we need to look at. Um, compared to stock TM frames. One is, though I didn't get a stock 5.1 style garter frame, it's worth noting that with TM, the 5.1 original frame here has little holes here. And then you put on a rail plate if you want a rail. It actually doesn't come with a rail out of the box, but it comes the ways to make a rail. So for example, if you don't punch those holes out, it looks like this. This is a DOR frame, but then except for some small stuff, it's the same up here as a TM 5.1 frame. You can see here, there's this here, there's little bits of metal, and then it comes with this rail plate and you need to punch out those little bits of metal and then screw on the rail plate here like this. Not a big deal, but it does mean that your rail sits a little bit lower what garter has done and again though i don't have a 5.1 frame the 5.1 version is basically like the 4.3 just cut off so the rail will sit a little bit higher you can see the middle of the rail is here with the tm with the rail plate and then the middle of the rail is a little bit higher on this other one so the garter style 5.1 doesn't replicate the rail plate it just takes kind of the 4.3 style and cuts it shorter the one other sort of dimensional difference you'll notice between these frames is let's see here this is a stock 5.1 and this is the 4.3 look at this right here you see this this is gonna be very hard to see probably in this black on black and all but you can see here this post here is quite thick right there and see if it focuses there we go this is quite thin over here the reason for this is, is this is is the tm gold match you see it's the tm gold match is also thin so it looks like what we can see here is they took one casting for all of these. And then what they did is for the 4.3 and 5.1, they left this out here. For the gold match, they went and they cut that short to match the gold match profile. But there is one difference because ultimately the original 5.1 and 4.3 have a thicker post here. You see here in the garter 4.3, if you put on a slide you'll see a big gap there, which is similar kind of to what you'd see with a TM gold match, for example. You see TM gold match, see this is a very clear way of seeing you have that gap, then also the rail doesn't fit in there because you don't have that additional plate. People still use gold match frames with no problem because most of the time, most of the frame is back here and you're kind of nice and tight on this back one and the, and the forward one doesn't matter as much. But then with a, this is a TM original 5.1, of course, you see here, this is fully filling in over here. So some slight differences. And from this, we can tell that basically when Garter went and made this, they used one mold for everything. And then their 
CNC or cutting off this part to match the gold match or cutting this short to make a 5.1 style or cutting this back to make a gold match style, if you will. So that does mean there's a little bit of a difference in the rails, but I think that's not going to be functionally different from the TM styles. It's worth noting that the garter frames don't come with any of the screws. You can, however, buy them separately here. So I got the chassis internal parts. I guess I'm going to use this. This, of course, isn't all the internals you'd need to do a build. So if you are going to do a build with no base gun and want to use the garter frame, you're going to at least need this and, of course, a bunch of other internals, the knocker, the knocker lock, the hammer, and such and so on, obviously. But this is some of the things you need. So what I'm going to do is, for demonstration, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take the gold match. And I'm going to swap it out with this. It's going to be, <laughs> I want to use the silver just to show off the color of the silver one. It's going to look kind of crappy, to be honest, on um, the stock gold match, which is black and gold. And then it's going to have a silver frame here, which would be weird. But it'll also stand out a lot. You'll be able to kind of see it very well and probably see the details of it better than a black frame. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so skipping ahead to having it fully assembled here. I put it together. As you can see, it doesn't look the best with, again, black and silver and gold here, but it functions no problem. I did notice when I was putting it together, I had three sort of slight problems, if you call them. Nothing major, and it didn't really prevent me from finishing it, but I do want to go over in detail about the things that I did see when I was putting this together. So three things, I'm going to tell you them, and then I'm going to go over each one in detail. The first was the inner chassis was a bit loose. The next one was the screw holding the inner chassis in. The screw hole maybe is out of spec. We're going to look at that in a second. And then finally, once I put it together, I did find I had this weird issue where the trigger was getting caught and not coming back forward there. But I think that may have just been my fault there. I'll put up a quick clip demonstrating what I saw there. And it kind of locks into something in the back. But what happened was I just took it apart and when I was searching for it, I put it back together and I couldn't identify exactly why that happened. I think that actually I may have knocked something loose as I was putting it together. That may be my fault. The dimensions related to where the trigger bar sit and such, I double checked them versus stock frame and nothing seems to be off. I think that I just had one of those inexplicable little errors putting it together, but I thought it was worth mentioning that I did have that. So I did take it apart once and put it back together in order to fix that little trigger issue. You'll see when I put a clip here there, but right now it works perfectly fine. Now, going on to those first two issues that I mentioned here, we're going to see here. What I'm talking about with the inner chassis looseness is basically this. Now, this happens with stock TM to an extent as well, but not as much. This, for example, is a stock TM one. You'll notice it moves a lot less. Now, this doesn't matter so much, especially because you have the screw that goes in there and ultimately holds this in place. But having a lot is kind of an annoyance. It's not a huge deal, I think. So see here that really the cause of it kind of is that, let's see if we can get a good shot of this. See that gap there? That is wider than on stock DM. Yeah, you can see there's barely a gap there. Which is not surprising. TM has very good zinc castings. For one garter, their fitment frankly just isn't generally as good as TM. And then aluminum as well is a bit harder to cast some details in, supposedly. I'm not a casting expert, but this is what I hear pretty consistently. So I'm not super surprised that they had a little bit of trouble with the softer aluminum here, getting into exactly the dimensions they wanted. The other thing here is you see here when this is in all the way in back here, how this is nice and flat across there. This, once this is in and back, there's actually, you can probably see it there. It's a little bit of a gap there. Not a gap, but like a... It's not quite perfect, if you will. It's not flush. If you push this forward, sort of, it's better. But when you put it back, we really want this to be back. This, by the way, is kind of important, or this can wear down a bit. What this does is, actually, I find a lot of people don't actually realize this, but this actually sits on this part of the magazine here and makes sure that your magazine kind of placement is consistent. On cheaper high kappas, this will kind of wear loose a bit. And it happens on TM in time and stuff as well. This is the assembled one. You can see here. You can see a bit of movement. This would be reduced more um, if the screw here is nice and tight. However, that brings me to my next issue. I found that the screw hole in this one, this screw hole specifically, this guy here, 
coming out this side as well. Seems to be a bit too tight, maybe, or maybe off spec. I'm not sure exactly what the issue is. I first tried putting it on with this screw from the garter kit. I have a second garter kit here, is this one, chassis internal parts, where I'm using this screw here, right? And I did find that I had to try and screw it down so hard that I ended up stripping the head a bit. And as you can see here, up where this is raw metal, let's focus for me, where this is raw metal here, clearly this screw was not having a good time, which suggests that maybe the threading here, the hole isn't that consistent. Maybe towards the end here, it gets too small, which, you know, is this a soft metal? I'm a little surprised that the softer aluminum stripped this like this. Maybe I cross-threaded it. I'm not sure. So I'm going to check this out. I'm going to use a fresh screw from this kit and this one, which has not been screwed in yet. And we're going to see if I have the same issue that I have with this one and whether or not it seems to be repeatable or maybe I had a fluke. Take out just the one little screw I want. Now let's try putting this guy in here. Sigil like this. I'm gonna use this big old chubby guy to get proper leverage here. Okay so far. Ah, oh, brilliant. Okay. This one worked with no issue. So I'm not sure the problem. I wonder if actually this one had an error and then the threading didn't go all the way through because it was not just this one screw, but also I went and used the original TM screw, which seemed to hold up a little better over here. At least the Phillips head there held up better though. The TM screw also stripped a bit down here. I wonder if there are some QC issues with the silver one and this wasn't threaded all the way properly. This one, however, seems to be okay. So could be a sample size of two, one I had an issue with, can't say for sure whether maybe I cross-threaded it somehow or the like. This one seems to work perfectly well with no problem at all. So I can't say for sure. I suspect this may be sort of an issue of garter QC perhaps. Do be aware that perhaps that could be a problem there. Other than that, however, everything was okay. And we're going to now look at how it cycles. Of course, this frame, I think, does not really match the color scheme here, but with a black one, it would. Though, let's see here. Of course, the shininess of the frame would be different from the rest of these sort of plastic parts here, of course, but that's a little bit inherent. This, the coating here, on by the way, is a bit matte, and on the black one especially, it's quite grippy, which you may or may not like. Around the same on the other one, I suppose. The amount of movement in a plastic slide with the gold match here is, I think, about the same as stock, to be honest. The TM stock plastic slides aren't super, super tight against the frame. They usually have a little bit of movement, so they move freely. Now let me do a quick swap out of the internals. I'm just going to take the internals from this slide here onto an aluminum slide, and let's check out the fitment there. All right. I swapped some parts around and this now has, I also swapped out the inner and an outer because the stock gold match outer does not play that well with aluminum slides. So I'm put this guy on, we'll see if my outer barrel comes out of alignment here. Okay, I'm in. Yeah, this 5Q, 5Q one likes to pop out a bit. But once it goes in, it goes in. Pretty stiff here.
So this is basically, I actually hadn't installed this on anything before, just some minor tests, but never with all the internals and stuff, this slide, I mean. So I'm not surprised that it started out a little bit rough, but then very quickly and basically immediately wore right into place there. This also has a stock recoil spring, which doesn't have much power behind it, so it can't really overcome friction. But seems to be doing okay. So you get the idea. I gave it a fair amount of shooting with both green gas and an HP8 adapter. And we see basically some wear, more or less where you expect wear along here, more or less where you expect wear on a normal TM frame. However, this being aluminum, it certainly does wear a little bit faster. The aluminum is a fair bit softer. Don't see major wear along the rails here. A bit. I'd say a normal amount. And then where there's wear, it's pretty obvious where it goes right through this, the finish there. Seeing this does make me think maybe on the outside as well, the finish will be a little bit thin, which doesn't matter so much with the silver because it's going to be silver wearing into the, the silver, the aluminum. But then for a black frame like this, if you get that wear, it could certainly end up showing more obviously on the outside. All right, full disclosure for my conclusion here, I'm shooting this a few weeks after I took most of the footage for this. I got these when they first came out in Taiwan in early June, and I'm doing this conclusion about three weeks later. And in the meantime, I've seen people put out some opinions on this, which I wanted to take into consideration. Now, Garter as a company actually brings out a surprising amount of strong feelings from various people. You see, I've seen people post about this, people who clearly didn't get this because they posted about it days after it came out before probably they actually got it and said, oh, I've used several of these and they're crap. Well, I know from timing that they're not talking about this frame. They're talking about garter parts. They're talking about garter kits. Garter kits have a bit of a reputation because a lot of them have needed fitment in the past. I can't comment on every garter kit, but I can comment on this and say that I didn't really need any actual fitment. As I noted and went through in detail earlier, on the silver one here, I did have some trouble with the screw hole for this one. And then, you know, the fitment of this inner chassis isn't the best per se. It's not as good as a stock TM. You have that little gap there. But I didn't have to do anything that I would consider fitment. No filing, no sanding, no real issues per se. And then the screw hole issue on the 4.3 black one I have here was no issue at all. This worked perfectly. So despite a lot of people saying, you know, everything Garter makes is crap, everything doesn't work, uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. Definitely some of their stuff probably isn't the best, especially some of their older kits. They have different tiers of stuff. Some stuff they make is full CNC and you can expect to be a bit better. Some is just fully cast. I think this is kind of midway where it's cast with some CNC finishing in appropriate places. But long story short, I had no real problems with this kit. If there's going to be any problems with it, I think it's going to be longevity stuff because cast aluminum is going to be softer than cast zinc and you may have some more wear. So right off, for example, the rails here fit perfectly. No issue at all with both plastic and with aluminum slides. With aluminum, I had to wear it in very slightly, but it wore in very fast. Again, maybe it also wear in very fast because it's nice and soft aluminum there. Um, but then long-term, it might mean it wears too much. And then it gets to be, you know, too loose here. As of right now, it's about what do you expect from about anything and it works perfectly well. So I think there's a number of pros and cons with this kit. One, it's quite cheap. From a Taiwan or a Hong Kong store, excluding shipping, it should be about 50 to 55 USD, which is cheap. It's about a quarter of the price of a nicer CNC aluminum frame. It's also going to be light. It's going to be not quite a third, but less than half of the weight of a stock TM zinc frame. If you want a lighter build, it may be of interest to you. It also, comes with a variety of markings, which you'll have here. This is the blank version, but then there will be ones with markings. It also has a probably nicer than the TM stock way of doing a silver finish on it. So there's a few places where it might be of interest for a silver build, for a budget lightweight build, or that like. 
The downsides are, of course, going to be that I can't guarantee the QC and fitment. Like I've been saying multiple times, I had no issue with this. It seems to work perfectly. But I can't guarantee that you won't have any problems at all. Another downside is inherent to the material. Aluminum is going to be softer. Cast aluminum, that is. CNC aluminum is pretty close to zinc, while also generally being better tolerant to this because it's CNC and such and so on. This is going to be soft, and this might wear. The finish might wear. Another con of sorts, which may or may not matter to you, is that this finish is actually quite grippy. It's not super smooth, which for the outside doesn't matter that much, but for the inside, for example, here where you have your disconnect rubbing against such and so on, maybe that's just a little bit more friction than you'd want. I honestly think it doesn't matter that much. Um, and then if have to be, you can go and you can sand or file this down if you really want to. I think it's honestly not a big issue. And if, honestly, if you're going to the point where you want some super finely tuned, super light trigger build, such and so on, this sort of budget item probably isn't what you're looking for anyway. So take that as you will. Another downside is that they all have the gold match style left rail here, which is to say that the rail up in the front rail doesn't interface that much. Obviously, even for TM based builds, this is exactly what you're going to have with any gold match frames and plenty of people use gold match frames without issue if you're really really a stickler for the f wanting to have a really full rail in the front of the slide having no movement at all then you should probably get an advanced frame with full rails i mean that's it i guess it is sort of a downside that they're all even the 4.3 like this and the shorter 5.1 they're all going to be sort of the gold match style with the bigger hole here so there's some potential downsides but to be honest for a budget build replacement for a stock TM frame, for example, I think this functions perfectly well and I have no real problems with it. You're going to see a lot of people who are going to knee jerk say, it's garter, it's crap, never touch it, it's the worst, blah, blah, blah. I don't really think that's the case. I think it's a perfectly functional product, especially at the price point, and it fills a gap because right now there's very little options sort of between no frame or rather the base frame of a TM gun and then a $200 plus CNC frame. There's some sort of ones, there's some Hong Kong companies where you can buy some stuff, I think like KF is it, but people rarely bother getting those overseas. I've never worked with them. There's are some kind of really, really niche options around. Another option, for example, is like the ICS frame, which came out for the ICS Challenger, which has a full rail and is also cast aluminum, but there's a little bit weird and not many people have used that. And though it's easy to get in Taiwan, it's kind of hard to get overseas. These are going to be cheap, widely available. I think there's a place for them, but you should know the downsides of the potential cons. If you go out and get this frame and you have any sort of issues, let me know in the comments and I'd love to hear about it. If I get enough sort of feedback, I might do a bit of a follow-up vid on this if I think it would be of use to people. Anyway, thank you. That's been a very kind of long video for one product, but I think it's worth taking a look at. And then probably people want to know some of the details here, which aren't going to be covered in shorter videos of this sort. Thanks a bunch. Of course, a like and follow is always appreciated. And let me know if you have anything else to say in the comments. Thanks a bunch.